Welcome back. Go ahead and suffocate the like button. Stick around until the end to see our next disturbing story you can't afford to miss. The Licked Hand In the shadowed, windswept reaches of rural Maine, where the dense forests seem almost alive with whispers, Sarah found her grandfather's cabin standing resilient against the test of time. Recently inheriting the secluded property, she arrived under a cloak of twilight, determined to spend her first night reconnecting with the memories of summer's long past. The cabin, nestled between gnarled pines and the churning waters of a nearby lake, held an air of untouched antiquity, with its creaking floorboards and the persistent scent of pine and old earth. As night deepened, a storm rolled in from the north, bringing with it gusts that howled through the trees and an unease that settled deep into Sarah's bones. After lighting a few lanterns and stoking the old iron stove, Sarah settled into an armchair with a book. Her dog Max, a loyal but skittish German shepherd, curled at her feet. The wind's moan seemed to carry voices, and the rain against the windows mimicked fingers tapping, seeking entry. Attempting to shake the eerie feeling, Sarah focused on her book, but Max grew restless, his ears twitching at sounds that went unnoticed by Sarah. Suddenly, Max gave a low growl, his gaze fixed on the darkened window. Sarah looked up, heart pounding, but saw nothing beyond the glass but her own faint reflection and the storm's fury. Trying to calm her nerves, Sarah whispered soothing words to Max, who, though he lay down again, kept his eyes warily on the window. Eventually, he seemed to settle, and Sarah, reassured by his quiet, allowed herself to relax back into her reading. As the night drew on, a feeling of drowsiness crept over her, the book slipping from her fingers as sleep claimed her. In the deep, still silence that followed, Sarah half dreamt of shadowy figures and whispers in the wind. Occasionally, she'd half wake to the sensation of something cold, brushing against her hand, dangling off the side of the armchair next to where Max lay. Each time, comforted by the soft, familiar licking of Max's warm tongue, she drifted back to sleep, assuming her faithful dog was merely comforting her as he often did. The storm raged on, a symphony of nature's power that seemed almost orchestrated to keep her in this half-sleep, half-waking state. It was during one of these moments, in the grasp of a chilling dream where shadowy figures danced just beyond her vision, that she was jarred awake by a louder crash of thunder. Heart racing, she sat up, peering into the darkness, and called out to Max, needing the reassurance of his presence. But there was no response. Puzzled and uneasy, she fumbled for a lantern and lit it, the dim light casting eerie shadows across the room. It was then she noticed the back door ajar, wind whipping it back and forth as rain lashed the interior. Panic rising, Sarah called again for Max, her voice louder and edged with fear. There was no sign of him inside the cabin. Grabbing the lantern, Sarah ventured into the storm, calling for her dog, her voice almost lost in the howl of the wind. She circled the cabin, her light catching on something near the woodpile, a trail of muddy paw prints leading away into the forest. As the reality of the situation dawned on her, the isolated cabin, the storm, her missing dog, and the unexplained licked hand, Sarah felt a surge of dread. Something else had been with her in the cabin. Something had mimicked Max's comforting gesture. The realization sent a shiver down her spine, the forest around her no longer just a benign witness, but a potential hiding place for whatever had been inside with her. With the storm as her soundtrack and the flickering lantern her only guide, Sarah stepped into the woods, following the muddy trail, each step taking her deeper into the darkness. Driven by the need to find Max and escape the unseen horror that lurked so close to her refuge, the forest seemed to close in around Sarah, the trees leaning ominously as if conspiring to obscure her path. The lantern light bobbed with each of her hurried steps, casting long, sinister shadows that twisted and turned in the wind. Her calls for Max grew more desperate, her voice cracking under the strain of fear and the relentless storm. The muddy paw prints meandered through the underbrush leading Sarah deeper into the woods. Her heart pounded in her ears, almost drowning out the storm as she stumbled over roots and ducked under low-hanging branches. 
Every rustle in the bushes, every snap of a twig, heightened her panic, her imagination conjuring visions of a dark presence lurking just out of sight. As she pressed on, the trail led to a small clearing where the moon, briefly visible through a break in the storm clouds, illuminated a disturbing scene. The remains of what looked like an old campsite lay scattered about. Tattered pieces of a tent, a rusted-out camp stove, and amidst it all, Max Collar lying ominously on the ground. Sarah froze, her breath catching in her throat as she picked up the collar, her fingers trembling. Max was nowhere to be seen, and the implication of finding his collar here, in this abandoned campsite, sent waves of dread through her. She clutched the collar to her chest, her mind racing with horrible possibilities. Suddenly, a low growl echoed through the clearing, snapping Sarah out of her reverie. Her head whipped around, lanterns swinging wildly as she tried to pinpoint the source of the sound. There, on the edge of the clearing, two reflective eyes caught the light, glinting with a malevolent intent. Sarah stepped back slowly, her heart thumping loudly as the eyes moved closer, revealing the silhouette of a large, hulking creature, neither fully beast nor human. Its movements were deliberate, calculated, as if it knew the forest far better than she ever could. As it stepped into the moonlight, the creature's features became clearer, a grotesque mix of human and animal, with jagged teeth and a matted coat that bristled in the cold wind. Realizing she was in grave danger, Sarah backed away slowly, not daring to take her eyes off the creature. Her mind screamed for her to run, to escape back to the safety of the cabin, but fear rooted her to the spot. The creature growled again, a sound that seemed almost a warning, as it continued to advance, closing the distance between them. The storm picked up, the wind howling with renewed fury, as if echoing the nightmare unfolding in the clearing. Sarah knew she had to make a decision and fast. The safety of the cabin was now a distant beacon, her only hope of survival hinging on her ability to outrun whatever this creature was. With one last terrified look at the creature, Sarah turned and ran, clutching Max's collar to her heart, her legs pumping as she dashed back through the trees. The creature's roars filled the night, a haunting soundtrack to her frantic escape. As she raced for her life, the storm raged around her, the boundaries between the natural and the supernatural blurring into a night of terror. Sarah's fight to reach the cabin and unravel the mystery of what happened to Max and what had been lurking in her grandfather's cabin was far from over. Panting and gasping, Sarah pushed her body to its limits, dodging branches and leaping over roots in her desperate sprint back to the cabin. The creature's roars echoed hauntingly through the woods, its pursuit relentless. Sarah could hear it crashing through the underbrush, the sounds growing ominously closer with each passing second. Her mind raced with fear and adrenaline, but a single thought pierced through the chaos. She needed to reach the cabin and find some way to protect herself. She could barely see through the tears and rain, her lantern swinging wildly, barely illuminating the path ahead. Just as she felt her strength waning, the familiar silhouette of the cabin emerged through the trees. With a surge of desperate hope, Sarah burst through the tree line and slammed into the door, fumbling with shaking hands to unlock it. Once inside, she slammed the door shut, locking it, and pushing a heavy old dresser against it with all her might. Breathing heavily, she scanned the room for anything she could use as a weapon. Her eyes landed on the fireplace where an iron poker lay. She grabbed it, holding it in front of her as she backed away from the door, her eyes fixed on the windows, expecting to see the creature's horrifying face at any moment. The cabin seemed to groan under the force of the wind, and Sarah jumped at every sound, her nerves frayed to their breaking point. Suddenly, the sound of scraping came from the roof, claws dragging over the shingles. The creature was trying to find another way in. Sarah's heart thudded painfully against her ribs as she listened to the persistent scratching, each sound a terrifying reminder of the creature's determination. Then, silence. For a long, agonizing moment, there was nothing but the howl of the wind and the pounding of her own heart. Sarah held her breath, listening, the iron poker raised in trembling hands. Without warning, the glass of the window shattered as the creature's hook-like hand smashed through, its grotesque face leering in at her through the broken pane. 
Sarah screamed, swinging the poker with all her might. The creature howled in pain as the iron connected, and it withdrew its hand briefly, only to smash another window. Sarah realized with horror that it was toying with her, using its sheer strength and ferocity to terrorize her before coming in for the kill. Knowing she couldn't hold it off much longer and with no way to call for help, Sarah's eyes darted around the room in panic, searching for any other option. Her gaze fell on an old oil lamp on the mantel. A desperate plan formed in her mind. Fire. She grabbed the lamp, lighting it quickly before hurling it at the creature as it broke through a window, trying to claw its way inside. The lamp shattered on impact, igniting the creature's matted fur. It reared back, engulfed in flames, its roars, now screams of agony. Seizing the moment, Sarah ran from the back door, sprinting away from the cabin into the cold night. As she ran, she dared not look back, the sounds of the creature's torment echoing behind her. The forest was dark and the path uncertain, but Sarah ran with the desperate hope of escaping the nightmare. Her breath formed clouds in the cold air, her body numb from fear and exertion. Behind her, the cabin burned, a beacon of light in the darkness, consuming everything. The Hook Man, a legend made real and terrifying, was left behind, his reign of terror ended in flame. But as Sarah fled, the haunting realization that the woods might still hide other horrors kept her running, her story a chilling testament to the dark secrets that lay hidden in the rural shadows of Maine.